we are exploring the scenic delights of Greater Larimer here. This is, again, the underpass where a person could go underneath the uh, railroad. Once upon a time, things were very busy here. And there were quite a few trains going back and forth, passenger and freight both. Now we're at 993, and we're going to turn east on 993, looking at Larimer. Larimer uh, came about because of the railroad and coal. But the mines have been closed here for a long time. The last mine in Larimer shut down in the early 1900s. Now that our little ride through Larimer is over, I want to show you a couple pictures. This was Larimer back in 1867. And I'll show you where our little ride took us based on this old map. We were coming out this road right beside the railroad and we turned right here, right where that underpass was, and we come out this way, and out this way over a road that's not quite there yet. Also, you might notice Brush Creek. We didn't go over Brush Creek. What I'm pointing this out for is Brush Creek when the railroad was first put through there, it used to go underneath the railroad here, go around the town, and then come back under, back over here. But that's not, that's not the way anymore. That was realigned, so I'll show you as we go along. The other thing I want to point out is right here. These were some of the very first places, the very first buildings in town were right here. Very likely these were here already in the 1850s because that's when Larimer started out. You see one of these is a hotel and this is a store and post office here. Now this is looking down from up in the air at where we were coming in our little video. We came along this way and right at the turn here is the underpass where you would go under the railroad and we went down this way come down 993 which is off the off of our little picture and this is the road we were coming down only the opposite direction than than we were looking what I'll show you up here up the road this is the underpass up here that we went past in our little trip these buildings look very much to me like they were once upon a time the uh, company houses. This one here has had a good bit of addition done to it. The company houses that Westmoreland Coal built were duplexes for the most part. They were made for two families and they were fairly good sized. I think this house over here too was a, one of the early uh, Westmoreland Coal duplexes. This is just looking down from the air at the area we were traveling through, and I think I can, I think I can do better. This is the same territory, uh, enlarged. 
This is the railroad coming through. This is where our little trip took us, down here, over top of 990. Actually, we turned on the 993 and went out this road here. And next thing we'll see will be down here. We'll be on this road here, and we'll be looking over this way. We're looking past Larimer Garage, and the building behind it is another one of those buildings that uh, looks very much to me like one of the early company houses. When you remember that Larimer Mine Number One shut down in the first decade of the 1900s, you realize these houses are probably more than 100 years old. The mine shut down more than 100 years ago. This is looking at that same scenery from up in the air. This is the garage, and these are two company houses that uh, were very likely there a long time ago. The Habs Hair Group, which is a part of the uh, United States Park Service, did a survey of the area in the early 90s, and they mentioned that uh, th in this area north of the railroad tracks here in Larimer, there were two, rather four company houses in this area north of the railroad tracks, and I, I believe this, these are two of them. These are what we were looking at just previously, only from the other angle. This is one of what looks to me like one of the company houses on the south of the railroad tracks. And there should be more of them, which I really don't have recorded today, but maybe we'll get them later. Now this is a very old map. It's even older than the other one I showed you. I managed to get this from the Library of Congress in Washington and being more than 150 years old, it is somewhat damaged. This part of it has been seriously damaged. But this, this was Larimer. This was Larimer just a couple years after it was started. Westmoreland Coal Company opened their first mine here in 1854. And this map is 1857. And this is what's there. Not a whole lot, and there's, there's probably a bit more that you can't see. But on this early map, it doesn't even show you the, uh, the location of the, the mines. To see the mines, you have to look at this map. This is 10 years later, 1867. This is Larimer over here. This is one of the mines here. This is another of the mines up here. And right down here is Circleville. This is where the guy was born that Larimer was named for, William Larimer Jr. His house is still there and it is, uh, it's actually a bed and breakfast now, Larimer's Mansion Farm, just a little bit off of Route 30. It was once on the, uh, the old turnpike, and when the old turnpike was realigned a number of times, it became Route 30. This looks one more time at that uh, 1867 map, Larimer being right here. This is an enlargement of what we saw before. I enlarged it so you could get a little bit better impression of uh, things right around the town. You see, this is Brush Creek coming through. See how it goes under the railroad, goes around the town, and then comes back underneath the railroad. The chief engineer of the Pennsylvania Railroad, J. Edgar Thompson, 
got his railroad into Pittsburgh by following Brush Creek. This is Brush Creek that he followed. Other features here of note are by 1867, they map in the railroad siding that went down to, there were two mine entrances down here. My suspicion this is that this was Larimer number one, mine. That's only my suspicion. I haven't validated it yet. Maybe somebody knows that. There is another mine up here. You notice it says WCC Company. That's Westmoreland Coal Company. And in addition to the coal company mines, previous to the coal company, there were farm mines. Some of the old farmers had their own mines. This is one of them over here. The mine of Westmoreland Coal at Larimer is stated by the uh, Park Service group, Habs Hare, in their publication that this, the Larimer mine was the first, first mine of Westmoreland Coal. But there were other mines around, which but they weren't a big deal. Uh, you really can't develop a mine much unless you have transportation, and for transportation you need a railroad. And so when the railroad comes through, then they could start mining in a much larger, more significant uh, way. Now this is our final shot for this. This shows the first mine of Westmoreland Coal Company back in the 1850s. It looks like a pretty rough and ready operation, and it no doubt was. Here's a probably a mule over here. They were using mules or horses to haul coal around at the mine area. Down here you can see the railroad coming in. These are railroad cars, which would have come past the uh, slag pile here and then they could have dumped coal from up here on these tracks coming from the mine into uh, railroad cars down below here. And that is as much as I want to say today, and I think we'll probably have one more on Larimer, and so long for now. <laughs>